Hi, this is part of a series of uh, Z80 retro computing videos that I'm doing. So if you haven't viewed the uh, first video, I suggest you go back and uh, view that one uh, because it does a good introduction to the platform that I'm using and tells where I got the, uh, the original kit that I started with and just some basics about, you know, why I do a retro computer and, uh, you know, what kinds of modules am I planning on building, that sort of thing. So go back and watch that now and return. Um, otherwise, let's dive into this next module that I'm going to uh, build. So this next module is a bus supervisor. Uh, here's the module itself. Uh, don't worry, I will uh, zoom zoom in on it in a bit and you'll be able to see it in uh, closer detail and better, better lighting if you wish to. Um, this is the schematic for it. Uh, so what, what exactly is a bus supervisor? Um, first of all, I'm not sure that's even the right term. It just, uh, it seemed, it seemed applicable. Um, so what I wanted to do is to be able to have a way to take control of the bus from a modern computer, primarily to aid in uh, assembly language development. The old cycle of, you know, burning something onto an EEPROM, trying it out, then taking the EEPROM out, erasing it, reprogramming it, that's kind of tedious. Um, the other alternative is to use to run like a monitor program in the EEPROM that you can then load your assembly over serial and then put the serial in. That seems kind of tedious as well. So I figured I would try something where I could uh, just connect a Raspberry Pi to the bus, uh, put the Z80 to sleep, and then uh, start tinkering around with various chips on the bus, get them set up the way I want, and then uh, wake the Z80 back up. And that's what this module is going to do. So in the middle, we have our uh, RC2014 backplane. And then these other three chips, one, two, and three, those are I.O. expanders. They're uh, I squared C I.O. expanders, so they will interface nicely to a Raspberry Pi. These two here are MCP 23017s, which is a 16-bit I.O. expander. I've used them in some of my other projects, like the Nixie Tube calculator to do its uh, keyboard. Uh, down here, I just needed another four lines or so, through, so I threw in a uh, PCF 8574. Just an 8-bit I.O. expander, slightly smaller package, easier to fit it on the board somewhere. Also threw in an oscillator to allow this board to replace the RC2014's clock board if I uh, so desire. And I threw in a NAND gate that lets me uh, disable the oscillator and clock it from one of these I.O. expanders so that we can do a, like a slow clock effect. It's also a reset circuit here. Um, no, no real need to do that. I did it because the RC2014's clock board had a reset circuit on it, but you know the backplane also has a reset circuit, so we don't really need to use that. Uh, so not a whole lot going on in this schematic. Just basically every pin on the Z80 ends up hooked up to an I/O expander someplace. So I did add uh, some some current limiting resistors on all the address and data and control lines where they hook up to the MCP 23017s. And the reason for that is if you don't have 100% faith in your programming abilities and you think you might make a mistake and accidentally output a high on your uh, I.O. expander while you haven't put the Z80 to sleep like you thought you did and it output a low and then a bunch of current would flow you know, on this I.O. pin from here to there, and it could burn out a port here, it could burn out a port in the Z80. Um, current limiting resistor will hopefully protect against that. Just one final footnote, any pin numbers you see here are pins on the RC2014's 40-pin uh, backplane. Those are not uh, Z80 pin numbers. Those are RC2014 backplane pin numbers, so don't go looking at this schematic and uh, connect it wrong to your Z80 by accident. So here is the module assembled. Um, things don't always go completely right on the first revision of something. There were some mistakes in this design. I've since corrected them in the schematic, but I had to do a little bit of rewiring on the hex inverter. Um, on the layout, I also have these resistor packs a little too close for uh, convenience. They're kind of jammed into one another. Next time I do this, maybe I'll try to space them out so that they don't ram into each other. They're really hard to uh, get out. 
Uh, if you're building one of these yourselves, you don't need to use these dip resistor networks. Um, I use them because they're really easy to, you know, pull out eight resistors all at once and replace them if you chose the wrong value. Uh, the other mistake I made is I forgot that uh, two uh, single single headers next to one another don't necessarily uh, end up at the right spacing as a double header. I'd intended that I could be able to put a jumper across these and jumper these signals down to the uh, unused uh, auxiliary backplane pins, but spacing there is a little bit off, so I will correct that on the next layout. So on the back, you can see this is where I ran out the header to hook up to uh, some of the Z80 control lines that weren't weren't exposed on the uh, the uh, Z80 board that the RC2014 came with. Over here is a header for our uh, Raspberry Pi. There's a ground, um, an SCL, and an SDA. So those, that's your three pin uh, uh, I squared C interface. Here's an address jumper that lets us change the addresses that these three chips are at. There's the unpopulated space for the reset button. Um, here is the oscillator. Hi, I'm about to demo the uh, bus supervisor board. So we have it installed in the RC2014 over here. Um, here's the bus supervisor board in the second slot. In the first slot is the bus monitor board. I described that board in a previous video, so I'd refer you to that. But a quick description of what it's doing is it's displaying the current uh, contents of the address uh, bus on those four hex digits there, the data bus here, and over here is a M1 a memory request, IO request, read and write. And it's currently the Z80 is running at uh, you know seven megahertz or so, uh, so you can't really see much on the bus. It's happening uh, too fast for the human eye to make any sense of it. Uh, this is going to be a slightly different approach to doing videos than I've done before. I'm using a, a uh, screencasting program. And so what I have here, uh, you're looking at my desktop, I have two terminals. This one here is the RC2014's uh, um, serial console. So list, you know, there's no basic program, but we're, we're talking over the UART to the RC2014. Over here is the Raspberry Pi, where I have my uh, bus supervisor program uh, running. Um, over here you can see the setup. The Raspberry Pi is over here in this case. Uh, here is the uh, I2C bus, a ground, uh, SDA, and SCK. most basic feature is we can reset the RC2014. So sudo python supervisor.py reset. There, you can see over here that the uh, terminal program showed a reset, um, and we've restarted. And, you know, that's handy. You don't have to reach over here and push the button. You can just run it from Raspberry Pi. So let's type in a simple program, 10 print, hello world. Then if we run it, we've just got Hello World's printing out a few times a second. So we could uh, just test the reset while it's running. Uh, boom, we just reset it, as expected. Let's do a warm start this time and a uh, run to get the program running again. Now the first feature I'm going to demo is what I call the, uh, the slow clock. And the slow clock allows you to slow down uh, execution. So right now it's running at, uh, you know, 7-ish megahertz. We can change the rate to 100 hertz. And slow clock. So now you can see on the bus monitor, you can see we're seeing about clock rate of 100 hertz. You can see actual memory M1 cycles occurring down here in the bottom LED top two LEDs, you can see there's memory reads and writes happening. Um, you can see the addresses are going by kind of fast. Let's uh, control C that and go to uh, 10 hertz. So now you can, you can get an even better picture of what's going on. Um, again, address bits here, data bits there, control bits over there. Let's try a 1 hertz clock.
so yeah, that's that's a good way to kind of see what's actually going on in the computer. Uh, the one problem is you will see no output over here in the terminal window. And the reason for that is that the UART board, which is uh, way back here, uh, is using the same clock as the CPU. And the UART board is not going to be happy at anything other than 7.3728 uh, megahertz because that clock is actually uh, used and then divided in order to get the baud rate so we're outputting some you know ridiculous nonsensical baud rate and it's not going to display anything on the terminal program if we were to put a separate clock on the UART board we could get around that uh, deficiency so let's uh, let's Reset again. Let's do a warm reset. Let's run our program. Uh, let's try dumping some memory. So there we're going to use address 0 count 8192 mem dump. So what this is going to do is this will display the contents of the basic ROM, which is what lives at address 0 on the RC2014. It's going to display all 8 kilobytes of it. It'll output the contents to the, uh, to the Raspberry Pi's terminal. And it's going to seize control of the, uh, the RC2014's bus to do that. So it'll assert the memory, or it'll assert the, uh, the bus request signal. And then it will output all of the addresses, toggle the read bits, etc. And then it will restore the uh, bus rec signal when it's all done. So let's run this memory dump. There we go. So that is the contents of the ROM. Uh, you can see over here that uh, you know the, the stuff that we're trying to set is actually going on the bus. These are uh, memory addresses on the ROM. The data bits are flying by too fast for you to read them. And the uh, memory... Uh, request and read um, LEDs are set. So next let's try looking at well first let's see over here if I control C you can see that uh, oops, list you know the basic program is still there everything is still happy after we uh, we completed the memory dump because we returned the bus back to the Z80. Uh, so let's try memory dumping 0x8000 count 512. This will be the first 512 bytes of the basic program. So this this is the RAM. That's where it's put the basic program. Uh, let's clear that. So we can see a bunch of junk flew by. Up here I can see some stuff, but I think this is uh, this is like maybe the serial buffer from the UART, uh, where it's just buffering some data. I don't think that's the program contents, but I know from running this demo a couple times, that if I go down to 8146, um, our hello world string will be there. So at 814D is the uh, W character. Let's see if we seize control of the bus and we change that W to an X. So let's do a 814D value 70x78 and we'll do a poke. So this uh, takes the bus, does the memory write, and then releases the bus. And there we can see our W uh, change to an X over here. So we can uh, change it back again. So I think I probably laid out the motivation at the start of this video that uh, what I want to be able to do is to use this for assembly language uh, development, in which case I would get rid of the EEPROM, put another RAM there, and just uh, use this uh, write functionality to uh, write a program into RAM, reset the Z80, and then, uh, and then be able to run the assembly language program. Um, I think that'll lead to a quick development cycle have one less feature to uh, demo which is going to be uh, the ability to read and write I.O. ports so address C0 is where my uh, real-time clock board that's this board back here it was covered in a different video uh, but I know it's at C0 and I will do an I.O. watch 
and C0 is the address of the seconds digit. So we can see the pi is uh, dumping the seconds digit. So uh, the way I wrote IO watch is that it only prints if the value changes. Um, so it's actually reading it very fast, very often, but it's only changing once a second. And you can see over here on the bus monitor board that we do have uh, C0 on the address bus. We're reading the data, the seconds over there. And uh, over here we have the I.O. request and the read bit set. So if I wanted to change that, I have an I.O. write. Let's change that value to a 9. And then uh, we'll resume I.O. watching. Okay, about took me about four seconds to type the next command. So you can see we set the nine, and then it started uh, when we started uh, displaying. We were at about uh, thirteen or so. So those, uh, I think, those are the basic features that I built into the supervisor at this point. Um, generally, it's it's been a success. I'm kind of happy about the way it turned out, and I hope to get some use out of it. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.